Welcome to the demonstration on system logging on a Ruckus ICX switch. The local system log shows events that have occurred on the switch uh, since it's been up or uh, whatever's left in a buffer of events that have happened on the switch. And those can be viewed with the show logging command. And so you can see several log entries here. Um, if you have a very active switch, uh, you might have generate a lot of log entries in this in this log. And the switch, like most things, has a finite set of default values that are set for how large this log can get. So um, we can take a look at what those values are of how large this log can reach by using the show default values command. And so with show default values, we can see that our syslog has a buffer of 50 lines. So we can have 50 items in that log telling us about events that have happened in the switch. Now, that may not be enough uh, lines in the system log for you to be able to, to be useful for you. So we can get in and we can actually uh, change that value and increase that so that you can have more log entries in the switch for keeping track of events that occur. So to do that, we get into configuration mode and we use the logging buffered command. And this has several options. Uh, the logging buffered command, first it lets you uh, set the number of dynamic log entries from one to a thousand. So we've got a little room to play there. Uh, and then it allows you to enable or disable different alerts in the log to limit what goes in that log. So you can enable or disable alerts, critical level entries, debugging, emergencies, errors, informational and notification and warnings. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to just go ahead and, and double our log size. So we'll set that to 1000. And now notice here that it says a reload is required. So this is kind of like uh, resetting default values or, or maximum values in a switch. So for this to happen, we have to do a write memory and then we have to reload or power cycle the switch for this change right here to take effect. Um, but okay, so now we could have a thousand entries, uh, you know, that's good. Uh, now what happens if we're in the middle of working on something and the switch reboots or we have to reboot the switch in, that, in the middle of that process? Um, we'd like to have the logs be persistent. Right now, if a soft reboot were to occur, everything in that log would go away and it would start writing new log entries to the log. But we can set this to be persistent, so it starts writing that uh, to a storage space, and on the reload, it would repopulate the log with these entries. So we can do that with the logging persistence command. And with that command, now the logs will stay intact after a reboot, and you'll be able to see some of the events that occurred before the reboot on soft reboots, which could be very helpful. Now, if you don't want to have to worry about that, there's probably a better solution, and there's definitely a better solution, where you could set up logging to a host or to an external syslog server. Uh, which is probably the best thing because then every event that occurs is stored away from the switch and if any event happens to the switch you'll have those logs that are available to you on that external server so that's done with the logging host command and all we do here is we provide an ipv4 ipv6 address or a server name if you've got dns enabled on here so we'll go with uh, one of my devices So now logging is set to be sent to that host. Every logging event that occurs, message will be sent. That login should be saved by that server, and I'll have persistence that way. Um, so uh, that could take away the need for that logging persistence that we configured just a moment ago. And then sometimes while you're working through the switch, you might want to have the log entries show up on your console while you're working on it. So we can do that as well, and that's done with the logging console command. And with logging console, now, if any event were to occur on the switch, say a, a spanning tree state change, um, OSPF neighbor going down or coming back up, anything like that, you would see that message come up on the screen, and I'm directly connected to the console, we'd see that on the screen as we're working and constantly be updated about events that are going on with the switch. So this is a nice real-time tool that uh, helps you see things that are going on in real time. So those are some of the capabilities of logging. Thank you for viewing this demonstration. I hope to see you back for more demonstrations in the future. Thank you.